every single nephron within our kidneys contains a structure known as the renal corpuscle. And the renal corpuscle is involved in filtering our blood as we'll see in just a moment. So if we take a look at the nephron and we zoom in on this structure, we get the diagram of the renal corpuscle. So the renal corpuscle is found in this segment of the nephron. Now, the renal corpuscle actually consists of two different structures. We have this cup-shaped structure right here, which is the Bowman's capsule. And within the cavity of this Bowman's capsule, we have a network of blood capillaries known as the glomerulus. So our afferent arteriole brings and carries the oxygenated blood filled with nutrients as well as waste products into the glomerulus. And the blood that travels through that glomerulus basically is filtered. So about 20% of that blood enters the space of the Bowman's capsule through a region known as our filtration layer that we're going to discuss in just a moment. And the rest of that blood, about 80% of it, is carried via and into the efferent arteriole that carries the rest of that blood to the vasa recta, the second capillary system of our nephron. Remember, the nephron contains a portal system, two capillary networks. The glomerulus is the first capillary network, and the vasa recta is the second capillary network. So let's take a look at our glomerulus. So the glomerulus consists of two types of specialized cells. So lining the capillaries of the glomerulus are cells known as endothelial cells. And endothelial cells are basically involved in filtration. They contain tiny pores, tiny federations that are responsible for allowing the movement of small particles and molecules across this layer and into the Bowman space. So this region here inside the Bowman's capsule is known as the Bowman's space. Now, by the way, this section here is the beginning of the proximal convoluted tubule. So these cells here are the cells of the proximal convoluted tubule. So the filtrate flows into the Bowman space and then into the lumen of our proximal convoluted tubule. Now, the other type of cell that is found in the glomerulus is known as the mesangial cell. And the mesangial cells are shown in orange. The mesangial cells are modified smooth muscle cells that are responsible for contracting our blood vessels inside our glomerulus. And that speeds up or slows down the movement of the blood plasma through our glomerulus. So this is our glomerulus. Now what about the Bowman's capsule? The Bowman's capsule consists of a parietal layer of cells, which is this outer layer of cells found on both sides, as well as an inner layer of cells that is known as the visceral layer. And the visceral layer contains a specialized type of filtration cell known as the podocyte. The podocyte, as we'll see in just a moment, contains very small slits that actually allows the filtration of our blood. So we also have this section known as the juxtaglomeral apparatus. And this is nothing more than a collection of three types of cells that are involved in controlling and regulating the process of filtration and movement of the blood plasma through our renal corpuscle. So we have the macula densa, which are the cells found on this side of the distal convoluted tubule. So this is a cross section of the distal convoluted tubule. It's coming out of the board and bringing blood this way. Now these cells are the granular cells also known as the juxtaglomeral cells and these are the agranule cells also known as the laces cells. And we'll talk about the function of these cells in just a moment. 
So let's take a look at our filtration layer. So if we take a cross section, if we look at this section here, we get the following diagram. So as the blood travels through the blood capillaries of the glomerulus, we basically have a layer of different cells known as our filtration membrane. So this is a three layer membrane. So these red cells are the endothelial cells of the blood vessels that contain the tiny pores, the tiny holes that allow the movement of small molecules such as water molecules, amino acids, glucose molecules, as well as, well as electrolytes such as sodium ions, potassium ions, and other things. Now, this purple section is the basement membrane that is shown in this diagram. It's this purple outline that goes all the way around our Bowman's capsule. So this purple layer is the basement membrane. It consists of a network of proteins and it contains a negative overall charge. And what that basically means is negatively charged particles such as chloride ions will find it very difficult to actually pass across the basement membrane because of that repulsion between the negative charge of the chloride ion and the negative and a negative charge of the basement membrane. So we see that positively charged particles will be attracted across but negatively charged particles will tend to stay within the blood vessels of our glomerulus. Now, these cells shown in brown are the podocytes. They form the visceral layer of the Bowman's capsule. And these podocytes have small extensions that extend into the basement membrane and connect with that basement membrane. And between the podocytes, we have these very tiny slits, very tiny holes that also allow the movement of small particles across the membrane. So we have a three layer filtration membrane that allows the movement of certain type of particles across our membrane and into the space of the Bowman's capsule. Now, this type of filtration process that takes place inside the renal corpuscle is known as ultrafiltration or glomerular filtration. And the normal rate at which our filtration takes place inside the renal corpuscle is 125 milliliters every single minute. Now, let's go on to these cells and let's discuss the function of granular cells and macula densa cells. So, the structure known as the juxtaglomerular apparatus consists of these three types of cells, granular cells or extra or our uh, juxtaglomerular cells, our macula densa, as well as our agranule cells or our lysis cells. Now, the granule cells are involved in secreting a type of proteolytic enzyme known as renin, and renin is involved in the renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway that is involved in controlling the blood volume and blood pressure inside our body. Now, the macula densa cells are found on our proximal convolute tubule and they're found in close proximity to the granule cells. And these macula densa cells are basically important because they are able to actually sense the concentration of sodium chloride inside the distal convoluted tubule. And they are also responsible for stimulating the granule cells to release that renin proteolytic enzyme that is responsible for controlling our blood volume and blood pressure. Now, the function of the agranule cells in not, is not yet known. So let's summarize our discussion of the renal corpuscle. So we see that the renal corpuscle is involved in filtering our blood. About 20% of the blood that enters the glomerulus through the afferent arterial is actually filtered into the Bowman space and travels into the proximal convoluted tubule of our nephron. The other 80% basically leaves via the efferent arterial and travels to the second capillary network system known as the vasa recta. 
Now, this membrane separating the space of the Bowman's capsule and the space, the lumen of the capillaries inside the glomerulus consists of a membrane that has three layers. We have a layer of endothelial cells that contain tiny pores, and we have a layer of podocytes that contains tiny slits. And these tiny pores and slits allows the movement of only relatively small particles and molecules across our membrane. And this basement membrane contains an overall negative charge, and it basically allows the movement of positively charged ions and molecules across the membrane. So we conclude that things like sodium ions, potassium ions, amino acids, glucose, water, very small proteins, and urea are all going to be filtered across this membrane. But large proteins such as albumin, red blood cells, or platelets, these things will not be able to pass across these small holes and they will remain inside the blood vessel and will eventually go into our efferent arterial and will return to the blood system of our body. And by this method, our renal corpuscle is capable of filtering and removing some of that waste products from the blood plasma and into the filtrate. So once the blood plasma enters the Bowman's capsule, it is known as our filtrate and it contains many different types of waste products such as urea that are ultimately excreted by our body.